Okay, everybody, here is practice problem number two for homework 11, the last practice problem of the semester. <clears throat> okay, so I think this video is important because I'm actually going to solve the problem differently than the book does because I think the approach I will take is more helpful for understanding um, the true approach we should take on any of these problems, which is a radiation circuit. Um, so we're just going to start by restating the problem. So we've got this tank and <clears throat> it is, it's got some cryogenic fluid in it. So we already know the temperature of the tank and we know the emissivity of the outside surface of the tank. So we have this solar irradiation coming in so we'll just call that G, uh, with a value of 1250 watts per meter squared. Okay, and because we want this tank to stay as cold as possible, we're going to put a shield between the tank and the irradiation. And both sides of this shield have an emissivity, 0 0.05, we'll call that emissivity S, and let's see, is there anything else we need to know? Yes, so we've got these surroundings being space. And the temperature of space for now, we will say, is 0 Kelvin. The temperature of the tank is 100 Kelvin. And the emissivity of the tank is 0.1. Okay, so we've got the irradiation, we've got the shield, We've got the tank temperature and emissivity. So now we are asked to find two things. Number one, what is the temperature of the shield? We'll assume it's isothermal. And then B, what is the heat flux from the shield to the tank? So what is the heat flux passing from the shield to the tank? How much is actually getting through versus how much is hitting the, the tank. Okay, so that's what we've been asked to find. Um, our approach is going to be a little different than the book does. We're going to use a radiation circuit. The book just does an energy balance on the shield like this, and we will do one of those eventually. But before we do that, we're going to define um, the heat flux is away from the shield in both directions using a radiation circuit. And the reason we're going to do that is because I think it's important to get practice using radiation circuits. Um, okay, so with that in mind, let's go straight to the analysis part of our problem. So I'm going to erase that for now, and we'll just say, no, whoops, sorry, hit a button. Now we're going to do analysis. Okay, so we are going to use a radiation circuit. Uh, I'm going to build that for you, and this will take up, I think, most of the time as I explain what's happening. Okay, so a radiation circuit. First, we identify nodes. Well, our first node is going to be over here, and we're going to call that EBT, the emissive power of the tank. And that would be if the tank is acting like a black body. So this node represents essentially the emission from the tank. Now remember, uh, before we used temperature as our nodes, but now we're using emissive power. So now we need to relate that to the amount of energy leaving our tank, which would be the radiosity. And so that's connected with a resistor. And this resistor is a surface resistance, which, oh, sorry, that should be a T would be like this. So the resistance connecting the black body emission of the tank with the actual radiosity leaving the tank will be 1 minus the emissivity of the tank divided by the emissivity of the tank times the area of the tank. And what this does is it accounts for not only the emission from the tank, but also um, the radiation leaving the shield that hits the tank and then is reflected back. And so this will tell us the net heat transfer between 
uh, into or out of the tank surface. So we're going to end up using this quite a bit. Okay, so then the next thing that we have is transfer from the tank to whatever it sees. And so we were told to assume that the view factor from the tank to the shield is one. In other words, everything leaving the tank is going to hit the shield, okay? So uh, remember, we always draw radiosities as what is exchanging heat. So we have the radiosity leaving the tank and the radiosity leaving the shield, and those are exchanging heat with each other. And they have a resistance between them as well. And that is the geometry resistance, which is one over the view factor from one node to the other. You can pick either or. I'm just going to say tank to shield times the area of the tank. We could have written F, S, T, A, S, but it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so then that's covering the heat transfer between the tank and the shield. But now we have to account for um, the surface resistance or the fact that the shield does not act like a black body. And so we draw here our emissive power node for the shield and connect them again like we did here with a surface resistance. So that's 1 minus the emissivity of the shield over the emissivity of the shield times the area of the shield. Okay, but this would be for the left side. So that's everything hitting the left side. And then this resistance tells us how much is absorbed and how much is emitted from here to here and from here to there. So then we also have the right side of the shield. And this shield is at a finite temperature, so it will be emitting heat in both directions, both towards the tank and away from the tank into space. So then we need to draw another radiosity, which we'll also call JS. Maybe we'll call this... JS tank and JSS. So this is the radiosity from the shield going towards the tank, and this is the radiosity from the shield going towards space. And our emissive power and radiosity we connect again with our surface resistance. One minus the emissivity of the shield over the emissivity of the shield times the area of the shield. Okay, and then finally, we have this radiosity and it's exchanging heat with another body, space. So we're going to define the radiosity of space. And between them is this resistance, 1 over the view factor from the shield to space times the area of the shield. Again, so we did from the shield to space times the area of the shield. We could have done from space to the shield times the area of space. Doesn't really matter. And then again, we have to account for the surface resistance of space. Here is the emissive power of space. And connecting these is the resistance 1 minus the emissivity of space divided by the emissivity of space times the area of space, <laughs> which who knows what that is, but as we will see, it doesn't actually matter that much. Okay, so we've got this circuit. What I'm going to do now is actually erase the top, and we're going to um, write out what all of these resistances are and use that to narrow down this circuit into something more manageable. Okay, so we're going to start here with the first resistance. So 1 minus the emissivity of the tank over the emissivity of the tank times the area of the tank. Well, the emissivity of the tank was listed as 0.1. So that's divided by 0.1. And we're just going to leave everything in the area right now. I'll show you how that ends up going away. Okay, next we have this geometry resistance. 1 over the view factor from the tank to the shield times the area of the tank. That's 1 over, we were already told the view factor between the tank and the shield is 1, leaving just the area of the tank. And this would be the area of the tank as well. Okay, next, this resistance. 1 minus the emissivity of the shield divided by the emissivity of the shield times the area of the shield. So that's 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 times the area of the shield. Okay, uh, next, this one. 1 
minus the emissivity of the shield over emissivity of shield area of the shield. It's 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 area of the shield. Next, we have here 1 divided by the view factor between this, the shield and space times the area of the shield. Okay, so what is the view factor between the shield and space, which completely surrounds it? You'll recognize right away the unity rule, right? The view factor from 1 to 2 is 1 because of the unity rule. So 1 over 1 times the area of the shield. Finally, let's talk about this last resistance. <clears throat> 1 minus the emissivity of space divided by the emissivity of space times the area of space. Well, what is the emissivity of space? Well, space, which is a giant surroundings, acts like a black body because anything that goes into space will be absorbed and anything coming from space is emitted as from a black body. So we have 1 minus 1 over 1 times area of space. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so we're left with 0. What this means is that the radiosity of space and the emissive power of space are the same. And that's always true for a black surface. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to redraw this circuit. Oh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the most important part, the irradiation that's approaching our tank. How do we add that in here? Well, that is just an energy that is being input into our system. And we'll do this in red. It's being input at the shield. Uh, I drew this a little off. We're just going to erase this for now, so that's out of the way. So see right here, we're going to put an energy input, which is equal to alpha times G, or the irradiation times how much is absorbed alpha. And that officially should also have an area term um, connected to it, since we are working in heat rates here, so we're going to put area of the shield for now, but we'll see that all these areas go away. Okay, so let's go back to black, scroll up a little bit, oh sorry, actually we're going to go back down, because now <clears throat> we're going to take this whole circuit and create a much smaller circuit that we will use to find the heat rates we need to know. So first, we're going to write this leftmost node the emissive power of the tank, which in a way represents the temperature of the tank. Remember, that's the first thing we're trying to find. The middle node we'll write as the emissive power of the shield. And the right node we'll write as the emissive power of space. And connecting them will be a resistor each, which we will call our total. Uh, we'll call this tank shield. And this is our total shield space, where our total tank shield would be these three resistances added together in series. And our total shield space would be these resistances added together in series. Then we have uh, coming in here our heat input, which we defined right here. I'll write that again. Alpha G A S. Okay, now we have two different heat rates, right? So the energy is coming into this node and then will either be emitted from the shield into space or emitted from the shield and hit the tank. And then some will come back and they will exchange radiation, but there will be a net transfer um, either to the tank from the shield or to the shield from the tank. So we're just going to draw those like this. I'll say here's one. And here's another one where this rate is leaving. These are both leaving this node going these directions. That might not be the actual direction, but we have to pick something so we can keep our signs correct. Okay, so this one we will call Q tank, and this one we will call Q space. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I should have made my screen a little bigger. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. So what we need to do now is add up these three resistances to get our total tank space. We've got a little room up here to do that. Our total tank space is going to be equal to 
these three resistances, which I have conveniently written here on the left-hand side. So that's 1 minus 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1 times area. All the areas are the same, so I'm just going to switch to using area now. And you'll see because we're actually going to make it go away. Plus 1 over 1 times area plus 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 times area. <coughs> okay, so when we do that and add it all together, we get 29 over area. Next, our total between the shield and space. So we're going to add up these three resistances down here, which I've written right here. So that's 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 area plus 1 over 1 times area plus 0. So that's these three resistances added together. And when you do that, you get 20 divided by area. Okay, so now that we have our total resistances, we can get rid of these. And now what we're going to do is we are going to figure out what our nodes are and write equations to solve for um, the, the heat rates, this QT and QSP. So uh, remember, our analogy is voltage equals I times R, where voltage is our differential of potential, I is our rate. So our rate here is, again, heat rate. R would be our total, and then this delta V, um, remember, is equal to um, the difference between nodes. So here we've got emissive powers, so we're going to do the difference of emissive powers as the difference of our nodes. So this will be a delta emissive power. So let's write our two heat rates we want to know. The first one on the left is Q total. So rearranging this, Q total is equal to the difference in emissive powers using where it started minus where it ends up. So EB space minus EB of the tank divided by R total between the tank and the shield. Then we also need Q space. Well, Q space is going to be equal to, again, we start with the node where we started, EBS, minus the node where we end up, EB space, divided by our total between the shield and space. All right, so now we have those Qs arranged the way we want. Now we just need to define our emissive powers. Okay, so the emissive power of the shield. Remember the black body emissive power for diffuse gray surfaces, which we have, that's stated in the problem, be sigma times T of the shield to the fourth. We don't actually know the temperature of the shield. That's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to leave that as is. For the tank, EBT, we can write sigma times T of the tank to the fourth. Um, and we know the temperature of the tank. It is 100 Kelvin. So we can actually solve for the emissive power already. We get 5.64. Okay, uh, finally, the emissive power of space is equal to sigma times the temperature of space to the fourth. The temperature of space, as stated in the problem, is zero. So our emissive power of space is zero. Great. So we've defined our resistances. We have written now our equations that's going to give us heat rate and we've found our emissive powers. So at this point I'm actually going to erase our larger circuit so that we can work in that space because we still have our small circuit written at the bottom left of the screen there. Okay, so what do we do now? We have all those defined. Um, we're going to plug in our emissive powers and resistances into these equations. 
So QT being the heat transfer to the tank from the shield is equal to, oh, sorry, this is space, the emissive power of the shield, so sigma T of the shield to the fourth, minus the emissive power of the tank, which is 5.64, divided by the total resistance between the tank and the shield, 29 over A. Okay, now the heat transfer from the shield into space is equal to the emissive power, oops, the emissive power um, of the shield, which is sigma Ts to the fourth, minus the emissive power of space, which is zero, divided by our resistance between the shield and space, 20 divided by area. Okay, so we've defined what those heat rates are using our circuit analogy. So the question is, what do we do with these? Well, we are going to do an energy balance at the shield node. So right here, we're going to draw a control volume around this node, and we're going to balance the heat leaving and the heat entering being the irradiation. So we have E in equals E out because we're assuming steady state, no generation. So the energy in is going to be equal to alpha times G. So the irradiation times how much is absorbed times area because we're working in rates, which is equal to the amount leaving, which would just be QT plus QSP. So writing those out, divided by 29 over area, plus sigma Ts to the fourth minus zero over 20 divided by area. Okay, check that out. So this is cool because um, you see we are looking for Ts to the fourth. We know G, we know alpha, so we just need to figure out what to do with this area term. So let's erase all of these since we're done using these things. And we're going to just solve this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is we realize since this is in the denominator of the denominator, it actually can be thought of as being in the numerator. But since every term now has an area, they all cancel. Because remember, the areas were all the same. And that's great. So that leaves us with alpha G equals sigma Ts to the fourth minus 5.64 plus sigma Ts to the fourth. Oh, sorry. This is divided by 29. This is divided by 20. <clears throat> okay, so you can see right away what we're going to have to do is do alpha times G times 29 times 20 to get these out of the denominator equals 20 times sigma Ts to the fourth minus 5.64 plus 29 times sigma Ts to the fourth. <coughs> mm. All right, well, we'll leave this as alpha G, 29 times 20, which equals, now we can add this term and this term together, giving 49 sigma Ts to the fourth minus 5.64 times 20, which is 112.8. Okay, so now we can actually solve for Ts uh, by moving... So we have alpha G, 29, times 20, plus 112.8, divided by 49 times sigma. So we added this over here, divided by 49 sigma, and then took the inverse of the fourth, which is the one-fourth. Okay, and that gives us 338.2 Kelvin. Cool. There's our answer, which is the exact answer the book got. Honestly, the book did less work, but the book didn't teach you how to use a radiation circuit, which if we got to any more complicated than a single, really, remember, this was just kind of a single surface, right? We had a, a shield that was going to two different places. If you had multiple shields, you really would have wanted to build a circuit here. Okay.
Uh, there's one more question we're asked to answer, which is what is the net rate of heat transfer between the shield and the tank? And we already defined that, right? That was QT. The net rate of heat transfer between the shield and the tank, which is written right here. Sigma TS to the fourth um, minus 5.64 divided by 29. Um, this was divided by area, but what we will do is bring this area up and then divide by that area, which we'll divide over here, giving us heat rate. So, I'm sorry, heat flux. So the heat flux is sigma TS to the fourth minus 5.64 divided by 29. We know TS to the fourth now. So when you plug all of that in, you get 25.3 watts per meter squared. So not bad. We started with a G coming in of 1250 watts per meter squared. And we reduced that by adding a shield to only 25.3 watts per meter squared falling on the actual tank. So I didn't actually do this math, but for our discussion, let's see how good that is. So 25.3 divided by 1250. Wow, it's only 2%. So our discussion is one shield reduced the G on the tank by 98%. Imagine what would have happened if we would have added more shields. Okay, well, that's uh, how this problem went. Thanks for watching this last practice problem video.